Hello and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about a common oral pathology that affects the oral cavity as well as the skin, which is called lichen planus. But in this video, we'll focus on oral lichen planus, starting off from its introduction, etiology, pathogenesis, clinical features, investigations, histology, management, and then finally, if we leave this disease untreated, what are the complications that can occur? So let's get started. Now, to begin this video, firstly, we'll talk about introduction. Now, oral lichen planus is a common chronic inflammatory condition which can affect skin as well as mucous membranes, in this case, oral cavity. Now, either lichen planus can affect oral cavity or skin or simultaneously affecting both of the locations. Now, the lesions of oral lichen planus are mixed and non-scrapable, which are red and white in color, because if you try to scrape it, it will not come off. Like, for example, in candidiasis, if you scrape off those lesions, those lesions will scrape off, leaving behind a red inflamed area. Now, oral lichen planus can occur, as I talked about, individually like in the oral cavity only or along with the skin lesions as well now generally talking about prevalence oral lichen planus affects about one percent of the population worldwide now moving on towards its etiology although mainly the etiology of oral lichen planus is unknown but there are certain contributing factors which increases the risk of developing of oral lichen planus for example genetics use of certain dental materials for example the use of amalgam other than that some autoimmune diseases which are associated with oral lichen planus patients who are suffering from chronic liver disease they have an increased chance of developing oral lichen planus now stress is also an important component when in terms we are talking about oral lichen planus because it increases its chances Next, diabetes, which is also a contributing factor for development of oral lichen planus. And then lastly, patients who are taking medicines such as AMSIDs, ACE inhibitors, and certain beta blockers, for example, propranolol, they have an increased chances of developing oral lichen planus. Now, when we talk about pathogenesis of oral lichen planus, in generally, there are three steps which are important to know. Firstly, there are T cells which are called as CD8 cells. They trigger the apoptosis of oral epithelial cells. Now, when these cells undergo apoptosis, these T cells become cytotoxic for basal keratinocytes. The basal layer undergoes liquefaction. And then finally, that liquefactive degeneration of basal keratinocytes leads to the development of oral lichen planus. So it's the epithelium which undergoes uh, degeneration. And that leads to different types of characteristic clinical appearances, which we will talk about further in the video. Now, talking about the oral clinical features of oral lichen planus, firstly, it affects middle aged individuals. Next, although it affects males and females in an equal ratio, but it is more commonly found in women. About the patient who suffer from oral lichen planus, the symptoms appear in about two thirds of the patients now. The oral lichen planus when it affects the oral cavity usually but we will say most commonly it is associated bilaterally. For example if it is affecting the left buccal mucosa so it will affect the right buccal mucosa as well. Now if we talk about the most common site where we can find oral lichen planus it is the posterior buccal mucosa but other locations are also involved when we are talking about oral lichen planus for example tongue gingiva palate and the lips now the one of the most common and characteristic feature which is associated and a very important finding of oral lichen planus is called as become strier this is commonly associated in patients who are suffering from oral lichen planus and since these lesions they affect the entire oral cavity at times which are very difficult for the patient to bear for example the symptoms are very painful they may eating difficulty in the patient it makes eating difficult in patient who are suffering from oral lichen planus now in the oral cavity we have six types of clinical representation of oral lichen planus first we have reticular 
Secondly, papular, then plaque, bullous, erythematous, also called as atrophic, and then lastly, ulcerative. These are the six representations of oral lichen planus, and we'll go through them one by one. Now, firstly, talking about reticular type, as you can see in this clinical picture, you can see the buccal mucosa, and can you appreciate these white lines which are present? Between these white lines, we have some reddish lesions as well. So, these white network, or you can say annular type appearance, these white lines they are called as Wickham stria. This is the characteristic appearance of oral lichen planus, and you can see associated with these white Wickham stria in these peripheries, we have certain red lesions associated as well. And the reticular type mostly affects the buccal mucosa, rarely it affects the lips because other type of oral lichen planus affects the lips more commonly. The second type of oral lichen planus which affects the oral cavity is the papular type, which you can see in this case, this is the buccal mucosa. And you can see there are certain dots, which you can see these dots, dots, dots all around the buccal mucosa. These are white papules which generally enlarge and then when they enlarge they either can form annular patterns or plaque patterns. So this is the second type of oral lichen planus which is called as papular type. This papular appearance basically starts at the initial phase of the disease and then generally as the disease progresses it can convert into either reticular type, plaque type or annular types. The third type of oral lichen planus is the plaque type. Now. Again, in this picture, you can appreciate there is this buccal mucosa, and in buccal mucosa, you can see these white lesions. They're quite big as compared to the previous type which we saw, which was papular type. This is quite large, as you can see, and these are homogeneous lesions because there is only white lesion around, all around, and there are no interspersed red lesions. So, this is an entire white lesion which is homogeneous in appearance and it's well demarcated, as you can see. So this is the plaque type of oral lichen planus and if we talk about which patients suffer from it more commonly, they are smokers. Smokers are most frequently associated with plaque type of oral lichen planus. Now the next type of oral lichen planus is the bullous type of oral lichen planus. It is very rare as compared to the other types of oral lichen planus and as you can see in this picture we have a buccal mucosa present. And you can see these bullas, they basically form a lesion, a bulbous lesion. And then along with that bulbous lesion, you can see some reticular pattern as well. So when these lesions, these bulbous lesions, they burst, then it can lead to erosions, erosion like ulcers it can lead to. So this is the bullous type of oral lichen planus. It's very rare to see among these patients. Now, the fifth type of oral lichen planus is erythematous or atrophic type of oral lichen planus. Now, as you can see in this clinical picture, we have gingiva of the patient along with the teeth. You can see these gingiva, they are quite inflamed, they are red in appearance along with certain white appearances as well. So when we see this kind of picture, we can have an idea that the patient might be suffering from erythematous type of oral lichen planus. You can see there is homogeneous red areas associated here and along the lower gingiva as well. And along with that, you have certain white striers also associated with these red homogeneous areas. Now, erythematous or atrophic type of oral lichen planus mostly affects the gingiva of the patient. Now, along with that, we have desquamation of the gingiva as well because, as you know, since there is loss of oral epithelial cells over here, so this leads to decrease in the thickness of gingiva, which is basically desquamatous gingivitis and these atrophic lesions may then lead to erosions as well. So this is the erythematous or atrophic type of oral lichen planus, mostly associated with the gingiva of the patient. Now, lastly, talking about a bit painful condition for the patient or painful type of oral lichen planus, which is the ulcerative type of oral lichen planus. As you can see, it affects the tongue, and you can see this lesion, an ulcer is formed on the dorsum of the tongue of the patient, and Periphery, we have some Wickham stria as well. So, this ulceration causes difficult symptoms for the patient. For example, they have difficulty in eating mainly. So, this is the ulcerative type of oral lichen planus. Now, after we have suspected that the patient might be suffer from lichen planus, oral lichen planus in this case, now what are the investigations that we can use so that we can reach to a definitive diagnosis of the patient? Firstly, 
and most importantly and the most preferred option is the incisional biopsy because as we will discuss next in this video there are certain histological features which then tells us that this is actually oral lichen planus the symptoms are so characteristic that they then lead to the clinician that uh, that yes this patient suffer from oral lichen planus secondly we can also go for as anti nuclear antibody test they can also give us an idea that the patient might be suffering from um, oral lichen planus and it also helps to differentiate oral lichen planus from certain lichenoid reaction as well we can also go for immunofluorescence studies as well and then we can also go for as periodic ashes tip staining as well so these are the combined investigation that we can undergo to diagnose patient who is suffering from oral lichen planus now moving on towards the histology now histological features of oral lichen planus is of extreme importance because this helps us in reaching a definitive diagnosis that the patient is actually suffering from oral lichen planus or not as you can see in this histological slide of an oral cavity you can see initially that there is some thickening of this upper layer of the epithelium you can see there there is hyperkeratosis as there is increased keratin over here and the thickness is also increased of this upper layer of oral epithelium which is acanthosis next as you can see in this granular layer the granular layer is also thickened so this is the next feature histological feature of patient who might be suffer from oral lichen planus now at this basal layer as you can see there is liquefaction of this basal layer as you can see there is darkening of these uh, nuclei at the basal layer and the next and an important characteristic feature is saw tooth retipex now what are these these are basically triangular shaped lesions or you can say triangular shaped appearances between the connective tissue layer and the epithelial layer these triangular shaped uh, sh uh, lesions as you can see these basically form along this uh, junction and this is a characteristic appearance of the patient suffering from oral lichen planus and then lastly as you can see in this upper layer of lamina propria there is dense infiltrate of um, lymphocytes mainly and this that is because this is an autoimmune condition like t cells mainly are present over here so, so these are certain histological features which helps us and these are the most important features which can give us an idea that the patient is suffering from oral lichen planus or not so in the, after we undergo incisional biopsy then under that biopsy we go for histological features and when all of these histological features or you can say most of the histological features are present then we reach our definitive diagnosis whether the patient is suffering from oral lichen planus or not now there are certain conditions in the oral cavity which mimic oral lichen planus so we have certain differential diagnosis which can tell us what are the lesions which appear similar to oral lichen planus firstly we have oral squamous cell carcinoma pemphigus vulgaris pseudomembranous candidiasis dermatitis herpetiformis discoid lupus erythematis leukoplakia and then finally some patient they do cheek biting which can appear similar as we have discussed before which is called wickham's trial so these are the certain differential diagnosis which we have to keep in mind when we are suspecting lichen planus in a patient now moving on towards treatment or management of oral lichen planus we have to know one thing that there is no cure for this disease like right? there is no cure we can only treat this disease or manage this disease so that what so that mainly symptoms of the patient are under control now what are the goals that we keep in mind when we are treating patient of oral lichen planus firstly we have to reduce the painful symptoms of the patient next reduce the risk of oral squamous cell carcinoma because there are certain studies which have suggested that when we leave this disease untreated it can undergo malignant transformation that is oral squamous cell carcinoma we have to improve the oral health or hygiene of the patient because when they have certain difficult painful lesions in their mouth they have difficulty in maintaining their oral hygiene for example brushing so we have to improve the symptoms so that patient can take care of their oral health we have to decrease the stress of the patient because as we know one of the contributing or triggering factors for developing of oral lichen planus is stress so we have to reduce the stress of the patient improve the diet because when they have certain painful lesions in their mouth they have difficulty in eating and they cannot maintain their diet properly a healthy diet so we have to make sure that the patient is has a good diet and decrease the oral lesion because the more the lesion will develop the more the difficulty the patient will experience 
Now, talking about certain medications that can be used to manage oral lichen planus, we can have we have two options. Either we can go for topical disease like placing the uh, medication directly over the lesion, or we can also have systemic medication via oral cavity. Patient takes the medicine, and the disease can be brought under control. Firstly, for topical medicines, we have certain corticosteroids which, in the gel form, can be used directly over the lesion. And we also have mouthwashes which can help patient to maintain or at least have a better oral hygiene as compared to not using the mouthwashes. When this oral lichen planus undergoes many lesions, many lesions occur or patient is having difficulty in using topical medicines as the disease is not being brought under control, we can go for systemic medications. What do we have for systemic medications? We have certain corticosteroids such as prednisolone, and IV medicines as well such as methyl prednisolone. We can also go for retinoids and since this is a certain autoimmunity occurs against the oral epithelium so we can also go for immunosuppressive as this medicine suppress the immunity of the person so the T cells they attack oral epithelium in a lesser frequency so we can use for estiopine and we can also go for cyclosporine as well so these are certain medicines that the doctor prescribes to the patient so that the disease can be managed in a more helpful way for the patient in order to reduce the symptoms and have a good oral hygiene along with the diet for the patient. Now lastly talking about complications that can occur if we leave this disease untreated because we have to manage this disease otherwise there are complications which can occur which can further deteriorate the already worse condition of the patient. For example, firstly, there can be superimposed candida infection over the lesion as well. So this is one condition which can occur if the disease is not managed. Secondly, we can also have malignant transformation as I've already told you that when this disease is not managed properly, it can lead to malignant transformation of the lesion such as oral squamous cell carcinoma and to be more specific, the types of oral lichen planus which is commonly associated to undergo oral to undergo malignant transformation is erosive and atrophic types. So these are the complications which have to be kept in mind so that the disease can be properly managed in order to avoid such complications. <coughs> so in this video we talked about everything that is related to oral lichen planus starting from its introduction, theology, pathogenesis, investigations, clinical features, histology, management and then finally talking about its complications. So I hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.